The roar of our engines, the pump of our heartbeats, the pedal to our metal, the sparks that ignite us, the pistons that push us, the passions that drive us. From the feelings that move us to the places that pull us on the roads that unite us. With nearly 6,000 stores and over 17,000 auto care centers, Napa has America's largest network of parts and care, here to keep you firing on all cylinders. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1800, Three Ways to Filter Your Friends, by Nir Ayal of nearandfar.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 1800 of Optimal Relationships Daily. I'm your host and narrator, Greg Audino. So happy to have you here. You know, we've been around for a while. The milestones have become pretty regular, but it's still so great to acknowledge how far the show has come how much growth you've undergone as listeners, and the fact that we're still here together making all this happen. So as always, thanks so much to all of you for showing up each and every day, and let's keep it going as we tune into episode 1800, courtesy of Near I All, as we optimize your life. Three Ways to Filter Your Friends by Near I All of nearandfar.com 36% of Americans say that they are seriously lonely. For many people, the solution may seem to be to go out and get more friends. Yet, one study shows that when it comes to friendships, less is more. Quote, Loneliness has less to do with the number of friends you have and more to do with how you feel about your friends, study author Van de Bruin de Bruin, PhD of the University of Southern California said. She also says, If you feel lonely, it may be more helpful to make a positive connection with a friend than to try to seek out new people to meet. End quote. Rather than spreading yourself thin with many surface level relationships, you'll likely benefit more by dedicating time to a select few high quality relationships. But how do you decide which friendships to invest in and which to let go of? No one likes to lose friends, after all. The answer is to filter your friendships based on your values. Here are three intelligent ways to guide your friendship choices. First, define what being a good friend means. What are values anyway? I define values as traits of the kind of person you want to become. Nobody acts in accordance with their values all the time. We're human, after all, and we're bound to do things that we later regret. But it's vital to know what attributes you strive to embody. When it comes to our friendships, the tricky part is that some people define the same values differently. For instance, many people value being a good friend, but what defines that attribute may look different depending on who you ask. For example, one person might say being a good friend means being available, which means responding right away to every text message. Someone else may believe that a good friend is someone who is fully present and would not look at their phone in the middle of enjoying a meal together. Which of those two people do you find yourself reflected in? Would you be annoyed if a friend checked their phone while spending time with you? Or would you be the person checking their phone out of fear that someone needs you? After all, people make time for what they want. Other values we might seek in our friends, and in ourselves, include kindness, generosity, and being a good listener. Spend a few minutes figuring out what being a good friend means to you, so you can both fulfill that role and find it in other people. Next, seek friends with mutual values. Sometimes our values change. While our friends don't always need to have the same values as we hold, it's important that our friends make us better rather than hold us back. Recently, I spoke with a recovered alcoholic who said he'd lost decades-old friendships when he decided to stop drinking. Those friends did not share his values of living what he believed was a healthier lifestyle. His old value of always being up for a late-night bender with his buddies evolved into making more time for his kids and himself. The change wasn't easy, but it was necessary to become the person he wanted to be. We don't necessarily need to have the same interests as our friends, but we do need to have values that mesh. Our friends' values can't clash with or inhibit our own. It's important to note that we don't always have to agree with our friends either. Values are not synonymous with viewpoints. You can maintain friendships with people who don't share your politics, for instance, as long as you both share the values of seeking understanding, keeping an open mind, and arguing constructively. Finally, 
Book time with your most important friendships. Choosing your own values and ensuring your friends' values don't conflict are critical steps to picking quality relationships. But equally, if not more importantly, we must pick friends who have as much interest and time to put into the relationship as we do. We all have that fun-loving friend who's the life of every party. But entertainment value isn't enough if we seek to build a strong relationship with a friend. We need people we can count on to be available. When it comes to relationships, as with many things in life, consistency is more powerful than intensity. I put this idea into practice with my three closest friends. For a while, we tried and failed to stay in touch while balancing our busy lives. We started drifting apart. A few years ago, while I was researching relationships for a chapter in my book, Indistractable, I asked each of them how they felt about scheduling a regular time to talk every month. Of course, we can always be spontaneous and connect any time, but we needed a regular recurring time on our schedules when we knew we would talk. Of course, my friends could have said no thanks, that they didn't like the idea of planning that far in advance for a phone call. But they all eagerly agreed. Now I have space for them in my time-boxed calendar, scheduled every month in perpetuity. No more falling out of touch or wasting time finding the time. If someone doesn't have the availability to connect with you regularly, then they may not be a great fit for you, even if they are a great person. They just might not want to create the kind of deep relationship you are looking for. And that's fine. Consider it a poor fit and move on. Overall, having just a few good friends is better than having many superficial ones. You can take all that time you would have spread among a large network and invest it in the people who really matter to you. Don't be afraid to filter out the friends who don't fit your values, and instead, keep the ones who can make time for you. You and your relationships will be stronger for it. You just listened to the post titled, Three Ways to Filter Your Friends, by Nir Ayal of nearandfar.com. In Northern Virginia, you can make your future better because we've made college better with over 100 certificate and degree programs that prepare you for in-demand jobs by making tuition affordable and manageable through smaller payments over time with classes that fit your schedule. Northern Virginia Community College, we're the affordable, achievable, incredible college. Nova, we make college better. Apply now at boldlynova.com. At Discount Tire, we know your time is valued. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online. Did you know Discount Tire now sells wiper blades? Check out our current deals at DiscountTire.com or stop in and talk to an associate today. Discount Tire. Let's get you taken care of. And a great post from Near Today, which we thank him for. One truth that I feel embedded this whole article, though it wasn't directly mentioned, everything but, is the undeniable link between self-awareness and good relationships. In this case, good uh, friendships. Based on Nier's values-based approach, which I think is terrific, we are limiting our relationships if we don't first take time to get to know ourselves, our values, and what we want out of life. Without this, sure, we may have friends that appear to be loyal, as was the case of the man Nier talked about who decided to stop drinking, It seems they're only loyal until we decide that we might want to be growing in a different direction from them. Or the friendships might not officially end, but time together and communication could easily fall off if the feelings toward one another might become more neutral. Should this be the case, the friendships were more, you know, probably more experiential, reliant on the same experiences or beliefs as opposed to something less conditional. And of course, Unconditional, or as close to it as realistically possible, is what we want to strive for in all of our personal relationships. So, something to think about as we wrap up episode 1800, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today and 1,799 times before. (laughs) Of course, we couldn't do any of this without you. Can't celebrate for too long, though, as episode 1801, our weekly bonus episode, is live now for you to check out as well. So, be sure to head over there and listen in. That's where your optimal life awaits.